Hi everyone, this is Dr. Dongfang Wang. Today I'm going to do an overview of the MSH2 project. This is a semester-long research project for Bio125. During the project, we will investigate the connection between MSH2 and the mutation rate using an yeast model. Well, we know that mutation in gene MSH2 is linked to hereditary non-polyposis colorectal cancer, or HNPCC. HNPCC is a hereditary disease with a higher risk of developing colon cancer. 60% of the HNPCC patients carry mutations in gene MSH2. Since MSH2 is part of the DNA mismatch repair mechanism, defects in DNA mismatch repair is linked to higher mutation rate and a higher probability of developing cancer. So, is it possible to determine an individual's risk of developing HMPCC based on MSH2 sequence? Well, with the advent of biotechnology, it is possible to sequence a gene from an individual very quickly. The problem is that we all carry slightly different versions of the gene. As shown in this figure, the base at this particular position is variable among the three individuals. This is called a single nucleotide polymorphism, or SNP. Sometimes, a SNP does not change protein sequence. In cases where the protein sequence is changed, it is still possible that the change occurs in the less important region of the gene and the protein function is not disturbed by the SNP. So how do we determine which SNP is bad for you? While scientists have developed a functional assay for MSH2, we will go over the details of this assay in another lecture. In short, we start with an yeast strain that carries mutated MSH2. The mutant yeast won't be able to repair DNA mismatches, therefore the mutation rate in this strain is very high. We can next introduce a plasmid DNA carrying the wild type MSH2 gene into the yeast. This is supposed to produce the functional MSH2 protein and reduce the mutation rate. The blue circle represents a plasmid that can replicate in yeast. The purple segment in the circle represents the MSH2 coding region. This assay is called complementation or rescue. Well, instead of introduce the wild type MSH2 into the yeast, we can also introduce an MSH2 gene that carries a SNP, indicated by a small green speckle. If the SNP abolished MSH2 function, we won't be able to rescue the mutant yeast and the mutation rate will remain high. If the SNP has no effect on MSH2 function, we will observe a lower mutation rate similar to the wild type. And therefore, we will be able to determine whether a SNP affects the function of MSH2. This assay is done using the yeast MSH2 gene. So how do we evaluate human SNPs? In this slide, we are looking at an alignment between the human and yeast MSH2 gene. There are many similarities between the two genes. Asterisk indicates identical amino acids. As you can see, this region of the protein is very conserved between the two genes. If an individual carries a mutation, they change the amino acid from leucine to protein at position 503. We call this an L503P mutation. We can find the homologous position on the yeast gene, which is the L521P mutation, because this leucine is located at the 521 position. This mutation can be engineered into the yeast gene in a test tube, a process called mutagenesis. The green speckle here represents the L521P mutation. After the human SNP are engineered into the yeast MSH2 gene, we can introduce the engineered plasmid DNA into E. coli. The plasmid also has the replication origin for bacterium, therefore is able to replicate in E. coli. 
we use E. coli as a tiny factory to produce more plasmid DNA so that we can use the DNA in downstream experiments. This is the starting point of our MSH2 project. You will next extract plasmid DNA from the three E. coli strains that carry either the wild type MSH2, the mutant MSH2, or an anti vector. You will verify the identity of the three plasmid DNA using PCR and restriction digestion. You will transform transform mutant yeast with the plasmids and then measure the mutation rate. In this assay, lower mutation rate is expected in the mutant yeast transformed with a wild type MSH2. After the mutant yeast is transformed with MSH2 carrying a SNP, if the mutation rate remains high, this means that the SNP abolished MSH2 function. If the mutation rate is reduced to the level of the wild type, this means the SNP does not affect the function of MSH2. So this is the objective of your MSH2 project and let's see what you can find in